Hi, thanks for joining us for The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. I'm Chris Cooper. Growing herbs in your garden is a great way to add flavor to your dishes. Today, we're gonna to talk about preserving those herbs for winter. Also, fall is the time to get your lawn ready for spring. That's just ahead on The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Production funding for The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South is provided by Goodwinds Landscape and Garden Center in Germantown since 1943 and continuing to offer its plants for successful gardening with seven greenhouses and three acres of plants plus comprehensive landscape services. International Paper Foundation The WKNO Production Fund The WKNO Endowment Fund and by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to The Family Plot. I'm Chris Cooper. Joining me today is Sherry McCullough. Sherry is the herb garden curator at the Memphis Botanic Garden. And Booker T. Lee is here. Booker is a UT Extension agent right here in Shelby County. Thanks for joining us today. Glad to be here. You right. too. Thank you. Mm. All right, Ms. Sherry. So not drying herbs, but preserving That is herbs. correct. Yes. That's correct. Okay. Yes. So what do we need to know about preserving those herbs? Well, you started out with drying. Okay. Uh, most people do think this is the time of the year to harvest okay. and dry, but that's slightly incorrect because we should actually be harvesting and doing all of this year round, uh, not year round, the, from spring. Okay. For example, you can get two to maybe five pounds of basil from a a bait, one plant. <laughs> one plant. If yeah. you collect it properly. Okay. So you, you're supposed to keep pinching it in it and it gets bushy. So um, I've brought an example of some basil that I did last year. Um, and as you can see, it's nice and dry. Yeah, it's and when it, dry. you want it to sound like uh, uh, tater chips <laughs> when, it, when it crumbles. And uh, this is nice. Now, the stalks, I'm not too sure. I cheated and this has been out. So <laughs> I, I should have, as soon as it got nice and crisp, put it up or if there was any doubt, remove the leaves and lift the stems. Okay. Um, but one of the things that I want to talk about is, thank you. Yes. And this is one method to dry for something that you know is going to crumble and you use screens. Okay. And I cheated and used a smaller screen, if Booker will tilt it for the camera, and you can see the, the little black dots mm -hmm. are the seeds, mm -hmm. so I can collect seeds. But if you don't know anybody that can make you some seeds, uh, screens, then you can just use a paper sack, paper sack okay. and mm -hmm. hang it inside. Oh, yeah. and this also shows, um, I bundle using rubber bands. As plant material dries, it shrinks. Okay. We all know that. Yeah. Uh, if you just use a string, sometimes you go find out that you just have everything's on the floor. Mm -hmm. um, mm. But I wanted to talk to you about paste. Okay. We dry, it's easy, mm -hmm. but we're all from the South. We've all had dried black-eyed peas, <laughs> black -eyed right, yeah. right? Right, right, And we've had fresh black-eyed peas. Yes, we yeah. have. Uh -huh. And you know there's a major difference in the flavor, right? <laughs> right. So same thing for dried herbs. Okay. So you can also make pastes and that preserves the flavor. It tastes fresh. Mm. You do just enough oil to cover the plant material, put it in a food processor, put it in a bag. Now, you also want to be sure to label what you sure. put in the bag <laughs> and what quantities. When you put it in the, ref in the freezer, lay it flat okay. and let it freeze. And then you have little planks and you can put it anywhere. Because let me tell you from experience, if you put it over something and it droops around it and freezes, you may have to thaw both items at the same time. <laughs> but when it comes time to use it, you can pull it out. Mm -hmm. You've got a little plank. You either break off a corner, whack it on the table, or use the whole bit. Mm -hmm. If you like pesto, what you would do is use the oil and the amount of material required, which is usually about two cups mm -hmm. of plant to two-thirds of oil, mm -hmm. and put the whole thing in here. So when you have company come over in the winter, you pop this out and you have and fresh you have pesto, it. and they don't know that's any why. difference. Mm -hmm. That's why I like pesto, too, so that's good. <laughs> um, uh, and so we're talking the paste. There's a whole lot of methods. You can do syrups, you can do vinegars, okay. uh, salts, sugars. Uh, so let's go. Would y'all like to taste? Vinegar. Let's go to taste let's something. Go to the yes. We can do that. Um, sure here's three different vinegars I've used, and it's just as simple as you put the plant material in the container, pour the vinegar over. Okay. What vinegar do you need to use? Well, what do you like? This one's apple cider vinegar, oh. and you can see it's a little mm. cloudy. Okay. 
Okay. That may be off-putting to some people, okay. but that is <laughs> that's nothing other than this still has the mother in it. Okay. Um, the mother is what makes vinegar, so it kind of will roll around in the bottom and. Maybe it's not attractive, but it's fine. It won't hurt you. This one's made with white wine vinegar, okay. and this one's made with red wine. Yeah. See how nice and clear this yeah, is, is clear. to the white wine? Mm -hmm. um, this is a Bloody Mary mix. There's, I've got a book that has different recipes in mm -hmm. it. So, and this one's got cardamom and mint and rosemary and garlic. So I know y'all are just wanting to try it. So we'll I'll cut it apple cider. You want the yeah, apple, cider, apple this cider, this one, the Bloody Mary? Okay, we'll do that. It does not really have... No, no alcohol in it. Okay. And what would you like to try? I'll just get a piece of bread the here. Bloody Mary Bloody for Mary, here. Yeah. yeah, let me try that there. And so it is vinegar, so bear that in mind. But it tastes good though. Put it in here. And you don't have to have recipes. You mm -hmm. can just go with it. It's it's a very forgiving method. It makes great Christmas gifts, and okay. we're starting to talk about this time of year. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. So we also said salts. So here's some examples of salts I've made. The pink one is a rosy basil. That's kind of a red basil because you could use the red ruffles and stuff. Um, the one across the table from me is made with Himalayan pink salt. Pink and salt. I used a little bit of Tajitis lucida, which is the Texas tarragon. And I used a, uh, a little bit of just columnar basil. The what's in the cup is some that I did not put in the food processor, so you can see how pretty it is. Mm. Uh, it didn't keep the nice pink that I was hoping <laughs> for, but it was a nice thought. Um, so it's pretty much equal parts salt to plant material, and this you do when it's fresh, uh, so it's wet. Mm. So you put it in the uh, toaster oven or oven for on uh -huh. low heat till it dries and and gets nice, and then you put it in like a coffee grinder is a great mm. item mm. to use to okay. grind up spices. Coffee grinder, so, I would have thought about that. Yes, because yeah. yeah. right. yeah, they're small. Well, okay. Dedicate one to your herbs, though, if you're going to do that. Right. Otherwise, it's going to have coffee, coffee grinder. Right. Right. <laughs> so uh, right. if y'all want to try that, um, we can, try that. We it can to you. pass it around. Okay. So. You I know Booker, get you, get you I know Booker tomatoes, likes uh, well, uh, fried to. green tomatoes. Yeah. Let's see if you like the and red tomatoes. Huh? These are, an, um, just, just put some, in here? You can, or you can sprinkle it on it with your fingers either way. Put it in here. Yeah, that's a lot of salt. You want another piece to go yeah, with it? Yeah, a lot of salt, yeah. <laughs> Chris, I like salt, so, okay. and you can, however you would like to do it. Okay. Do this here. I eat a lot of salt. <laughs> yeah. Did you get too so, much? But, you know, so it's the basil flavor. And if you want it to be really, but, but, really fancy. But it tastes good, though. Mm -hmm. It tastes you, good. You can taste the, the like so the licorice mm -hmm. flavor is the Tajitis lucida, the Texas tarragon, which grows really well here. It tastes good. It tastes yeah. good. I actually yeah. like this one. Uh, and I don't know if you noticed, but I said, yeah. did I say wines? Yeah. If I didn't, Why? here's my, and um, I understand we're not supposed to drink it, but uh, <laughs> non nonetheless, I found a pretty bottled wine, a okay. nice little white wine. You could do red wine, whatever wine you like, and you just open it, uh, uncork it, and then you put whatever herbs in you think you would like. This is Texas tarragon and basil. Mm. Um, I wanted you to taste those two flavors, but... Um, it's very pretty, and trust me, it's tasty. We'll okay. take your word for it. <laughs> How about that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Sherry, thanks for that good information and for this demonstration. That was good. That was actually yeah, good. It tasted good, too. Good. I like that salt real good. There are a number of gardening events going on in the next couple of weeks. Here are just a few that might interest you. Alright, so we have Booger T. Lee, Sherry. This is our lawn guy. You know, he likes that grass. I'm the lawn guy. I like grass. So we're going to talk about fall lawn care. And Booger, we have some questions for you about fall lawn okay. care. Okay. So what do I need to do for my warm season grass to get it ready for the winter? One of the things, Chris, we've been through a good summer. We had a lot of rain, a lot of, mm -hmm. lot of, lot of rain this year. So one thing that if you if your booty is moody grass, and it's a warm season grass, but moody grass and zoysia grass. Okay. If it's been real dry, now you need to add some water to it to get it going to have it kind of wet and moist when you go into the winter month. Okay. And also you need to watch the cutting height and make sure that you don't have no disease problem going into this winter month. 
any kind of disease problem you had on there, you need to try to get rid of that right now. Because you don't want to go into the one with, with disease problem, because you need to go dormant. And that disease is going to stay there all winter long. So in the springtime, it's going to come out again. You're going to have the disease on there. What, what are some of those diseases? Can we have a uh, spring dead spot. Okay. We get on there. Also, we have some kind of like uh, brown patches mm -hmm. might get on there. Yeah. So you want to take care of all those diseases up early before going to the winter month. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So how low should we cut our warm season grass for the winter? We, we get a lot of folks that they call us, can, can I cut my Bermuda grass real low? Mm -hmm. You don't want to <laughs> cut it real low. You want to maintain the same height that you were doing during the regular cutting season. Because if you cut it real low and we have a real cold, cold winter, and the winter come in so early that it can damage the root system. Right. And then when it come out of nature, you'll be wondering why my grass not coming out. Because you damage the root system and it's not going to be, it's not going to come out early. Okay. So you need to make sure that you cut it the same height. I like to leave mine probably about two and a half inches tall, especially for your warm yeah. season grass. We're talking about Zoya grass and your Bermuda grass. That no one we have here in West Tennessee. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that serves as insulation. Yeah, insulation. Yeah, for those roots. Yeah, protect so those root systems in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so the next question is, when should I put down a pre-emerge weed killer on my lawn? Because we want to control those winter weeds, right? right. We're talking about pre-emerge, that, that's before the weed germinate. Right. You know, you, want, you don't want the weed to germinate. Uh, sometime like the middle of last of September or the first of October, you're trying to start putting those pre-emerge down okay. on your lawn. And most pre-emerge don't come in a granule kind. Right. You need to water it in in so many days and when, once you put it down. You can read the label on there tell you maybe uh, 10 days or 5 days. You need to water that into the, into the soil. I would try to time mine when it's going to get ready to rain <laughs> to make sure that I put it down then because I, I don't want to Maybe I don't put my water hose up, I did my spring right. and put it up. I want to I want to go back in the garage and kind of take it out again. Right. But I try to time that when I know it's going to rain and put it down then. Okay. What, what's a good pre-emerge that you can uh, We got snapshot and dimension, something that you might can use and get it from one of the hardware stores, big box stores and right. stuff in there, uh, and put that on your lawn. Okay. And it'll tell you how to put on, how much to put down that too, depending on the size of your lawn that you want to put down. Right. And you mm. need one of those spreaders. One right? of those spreaders. And some people use the drop spreader. Some people use the one that's to put it all the way out. Yeah, so either rate. one will be real good. As long as you get a good coverage. Right. Because if you leave some area that not covered good, and that weed might can sprout through there. That's right. And so you don't want then you say, hmm, I thought I put a pre emerge down, but I still <laughs> see these weeds begin to germinate and come through my grass in there. And you have all those weeds again into your lawn this year. So make sure that you uh, get a good coverage. Mm -hmm. And I like to go both ways when I'm putting a pre emerge down. I like oh, to go, good. just crawl, then I go up again to make sure I get a, a good coverage in right. there. And make sure you don't have any skips. Any skips in there because you can do that. But dimension and snapshot be kind of t uh, two good pre emerge herbicides you can put down on your lawn. Okay, good mm -hmm. deal. All right, so is it too late to dethatch my lawn? And why do we need to dethatch? A lot of times you dethatch in there, you know, you, you have insects hiding that thatch, they live in that thatch and everything. You, you probably knew back this uh, this summer sometime, those armor worms that came out, yeah. they, they were in the thatch. You know, they came out of the thatch and everything. So you need to make sure that you uh, dethatch your lawn Time to detach. You can't detach any time now. Right. You know, you can't go out there and say, I want to detach my lawn today now, especially they've got a uh, warm season grass. And especially in September, because it's getting ready to go into dormant. Right. You want to detach when the grass beginning to grow. And you know, like your warm season grass, you want to do it in maybe in May, June, mm -hmm. in that area. Okay. Like for your fescue grass, we're in September now, you can detach that now. Right. Because it's getting ready to grow now. So you want to do that now. Okay. And you can rent you with the thatch and go across there and get all the dead grass out of there. If you have a small area, you can get you a garden rake. That's right. And you can get you a just garden rake. You, you, you don't have to rent anything, just get right. you a garden rake. And also, I talked to my neighbor, and so let's let, let just touch our lawn today. Yeah, let's <laughs> do it together. Then you try to get him to spend some money <laughs> on it, too, so y'all can do it then. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, how can you tell if you need to be thatch, though? You, you can look at it. You can look at your lawn, see that, it, because you see how it's beginning to rain, the water not getting down to there. And also, you can go out there and dig some up and look at the, and look at the thatch in there, mm -hmm. how many thatch you have in there. And that'll tell you where you need to thatch or not. If okay. you, you got a lot of leaves been on your lawn for a period of time, you got a lot of grass and you've been leaving on it for a period of time, they be real tall, and when they begin to rot and decay, sometimes they'll build thatch in your lawn, especially leaves in there, so you know then I need to dethatch. Okay. And, and another thing, dethatch help when you're putting fertilizer down and all the other stuff right. down, you, you like your premier, and not getting down to the root system where to get rid of the weak of it, it'll, it'll build itself in the thatch. Okay. So you might want to make sure that you water it good. So that is very important. And I don't know, you don't have to do it every year. You don't have to do it, you know, just know when you just look out there, look at your lawn and make sure that it, it, that begin to build up. Okay.
And for, you know, our viewers, thatch is just a decaying, you know, plant material that's right there at the soil surface. The plant that material that right. is it right be roots, the plants roots, roots, shoots, or grass, you know, and grass, grass and all that, them be at the right old, old period of time. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you need to do that. All right. So is it necessary to fertilize my lawn in the fall? And we get that question a lot of dogs. We get the fall all the time. Do mm -hmm. I need to fertilize my grass in the fall all the time? No, for my warm season grass, like I'm saying again, but moody grass and zoysia grass, we, we in September now. I wouldn't give it no nitrogen fertilizer right now. Right. No, no nitrogen fertilizer. You want to get some phosphate and potassium. And all that based on a soil test. Sure. Now, phosphate and potassium, now, it's good for the root system of the grass. And also, it helps fight off a lot of diseases that be in the lung. Okay. So, you might want to give some phosphate and potassium based on a soil test recommendation. Because sometimes phosphate and potassium can build up in the soil. Mm -hmm. Now, nitrogen kind of leaches itself out of the soil. Mm -hmm. And reason I said don't give it no nitrogen fertilizer right now, because it, it might add some little growth to it. If we have an early winter come in, it can kill that back and also the damage your, your lawn. Right. But for, for your fescue lawn, this is a good time to fertilize it now. Okay. It's, it's getting ready to kick off now. It's getting ready to grow. And <laughs> you start seeing that it's getting, getting ready to, cool. Getting yeah. cool yeah. now. Yeah. It's a cool season of grass. Yeah. We're getting ready, getting, ready, getting ready to grow now. You can add some fertilizer to it, like triple 13 or 10 10 10. Be really good to do that. Okay. And, uh, and I like to do that based on my soil test recommendation too, and also in, in doing that. Okay. Well, since you were talking about fescue, then when can I plant fescue seeds? Okay, fescue is a is a is a cool season grass. Mm -hmm. you no, know, we 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 in September now. You can do it now. You can do it now around the around about the middle of September. You no, know, in September the first of, say about the first of October, mm -hmm. you can get time. You can start doing that. Uh, plant your fescue seed and, and stuff because they they begin to germinate with just warm weather, a little warm weather, but still getting cool. They have time to germinate and and before that get real cold. So that's okay. a good time. This would be a good time to do that now, fescue seed. Fescue and, seed. And you want to oversee some fescue seed, you can do that now. Some people are going you know, to oversee their they lawn. They're not going to go out there and plant a whole lawn. They got some bare spots. They want to go out there and, and uh, fertilize them, fertilize them say, uh, add seeds to it. Then you can do a garden ring, go out there and rake that area a little bit and, and sow your seeds out there. And, All right. You need to water them in. We appreciate that good information from okay. my lawn guy right here. <laughs> Thank you much. Appreciate it. All right. We have an infestation of, of uh, mealybugs on our mandevillas here. We're going to spray them with uh, malathion. Malathion is an insecticide uh, that's labeled for use on, on mealybugs. According to the label for mealybug control, uh, it's one tablespoon is recommended per gallon of water. So I had to do some math. This is a little over 12 ounces. That's about a tenth of a gallon. A tenth of a tablespoon is equal to about 1.4 milliliters. I actually have a, a measuring spoon, which is 1.25 milliliters. So I'm gonna put a little less than my 12.8 ounces in here to make it match my 1.25 milliliters. So, you know, you gotta figure all that out. It's so very important to, to follow the label instructions. So what I'm gonna do, fill this up about half full. Now I'm going to uh, try to get my 1.25 milliliters of malathion in here. I'm going to shake it up and then I'm going to top it off with water. Okay, got that. And I'm going to shake it up again. Okay. And see, I got some on my hand. It leaked a little bit. That's why you wear rubber gloves. Very, very important. All right, this is our Q&A session. Sherry, you help us out. We get into trouble, okay? <laughs> yes. All right, here's our first viewer email. Can you grow fescue in deep shade? And this is from Miss Lisa. And Miss Lisa, guess what? We just so happen to have our lawn expert here today. So Booker, can you grow fescue in deep shade? It depends on what you mean by deep shade. Right, right, <laughs> you know, how deep right. shade that you have in that lawn. Now most of all your grass, you know, is a cool season grass. It do need maybe at least a couple hours sun anyway okay. and feel the sun be going through there. But it's it, it probably going to grow in deep shade, but it might not do as well as you're thinking of doing it in the shade. It's a cool season grass. Okay. We know it grow in shade, and but you talking about deep shade. Now I don't know what you're talking about. It's just all just shade, completely all, right. all over. But it's probably going to do. It's probably going to grow in there. But she need to get get let it, like one or two hours sun somewhere to plant it. It'll do a lot better. Okay. But deep shade, you know, it, 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 it's 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 quite hard. You mean that deep deep shade, you know? But I think we'll do. I think we'll do okay. Okay, you think it'll be okay? Yeah, I think it'll be okay yeah, in, in, in the shade. But she might look at it more and maybe need a little more water sometime during that time and stuff in there. And also make sure you have good drainage and also want to get water in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but she said, yeah, deep the, shade. Deep, deep so. shade, yeah. No, no, I like I like for all grass to have some kind of sun, yeah, the sun, sun in, right. in there, yeah. Okay, so mm -hmm. she might have to consider limiting up. Limiting up some know, trees, just a little bit, no, let some sun get through there a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. That'd be, yeah. That'd be okay. great. Because if not, yeah, deep, deep shade. Deep, deep, deep shade. I, I would say mulch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Deep shade. Yeah, some kind of ground cover might do right. in, 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 right. in that deep, deep shade. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, Miss Lisa, hope that helps you out. 
So here's our next viewer email. How do you get rid of army worms? <laughs> and Sherry, I can't tell you how many times we've gotten that phone call. Booker knows. Oh, that man just came How in. many, 40, 50 people in about a couple of days? I, 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 I had to call myself <laughs> <laughs> because they, they attacked my lung. Right. Yeah, I said, man, they, they, they came out in, 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 a, in a hurry this time and, right. uh, and, and they're doing that. There's a lot of things that you can go out there and use for uh, get rid of army worm in there. Like uh, Ortho Bud Be Gone, we use mm -hmm. that, so we, we put down on, on our lung to try to get rid of it and right. stuff in there. Uh, and and uh, but most time with our Bermuda grass that we had, you know, and because I didn't see it, and we didn't have maybe one or two call on Zorgia lung, right. but it did attack that uh, Bermuda grass. And Bermuda grass gonna come back. Yeah. You know, you, you, you kill it in there and stuff, but you want to spray it and, and, and treat it and stuff in there. But like, uh, also Bubby gone would be one of the things that you can use. You can go to the uh, one of the hardware store, mm -hmm. the box store, uh, the nursery that they tell you some things that you can get to put in there. But whatever you get, make sure you read the label. Read the label. You know, read the label and stuff in there. And, and when I sprayed my lung. I let my neighbor knew that I had sprayed my lung because uh, he had a little he had a little dog or a little right, cat he come right. out in his lung and I wanted I just just told him so I sprayed my lung with something today on there so and I let, don't don't let the dog run over there right, <laughs> you know right. in, in there good. so I, I let him know, knew that I, I sprayed that okay uh -huh. right and this is ready to use so you can actually put that on the end of a hole yeah, hole yeah right and mm -hmm. it covers you know anywhere from a thousand to five thousand square feet mm -hmm. right. So yeah, and and, and most lawn service they they doing like they 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 put somebody in, in the yard that they have been sprayed. And right. Something. But I let my neighbor knew that I was going to spray my lawn. Okay. And, and for for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good so. deal. Yeah, the army worms were tough this year. There's no doubt about that. But <laughs> but if you catch them, you know, early enough when they're still mm -hmm. small, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm and I'm talking less than an inch, you can actually use BT. BT. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Bacillus thuringiensis, which is a safe product, mm -hmm. uh, and it would actually you know control those uh, good, army yeah. worms for mm -hmm. you. Of course, yeah. they have to ingest it. Once they do, they get a stomach ache, they die. Mm -hmm. So for folks that want to go the safe for route. Safe route but yeah. I understand you have to catch them early, early yeah. when they're still small, small, <laughs> and you can knock them out that way. Yeah. All right, Ms. Sue, hope that helps you out. Here's our next viewer email with a picture. This plant slash weed started growing, growing in my yard and it had small purple flowers on it in the spring that attracted bees. I am thinking I might transplant it to my front yard on my hill so I won't have to mow there. It is very low to the ground. Can you tell me what this is? And guess what that is? It's a juga. A juga, yeah, okay, yeah, right. okay. It is a low ground cover. Ground crap, you know, ground cover, yeah. Pretty much, uh, you know, forms a mat. Okay. Which will not, you know, let any weeds grow mm -hmm. in that area. So it actually means you have real good drainage. Good drainage, okay, then right. that's good. For then. it to grow like yeah. that. Yeah. It, it usually grows in part, sh you know, shade. shade. Mm -hmm. uh, it will grow in the sun, but it grows a lot slower a in slower, the sun, okay. but it prefers, uh, you know, um, part shade. But it's real good, low maintenance, the ground the cover. Ground cover, yeah. I thought it was a ground cover, it's kind of like, you know, when I, when I, when I glanced mm -hmm. it, yeah, it's like a ground cover. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, it blooms, what, mid spring to the mm -hmm. summer for mm -hmm. the most part. You know, purple flowers, some have pinkish pink looking flag, yeah, flowers. Um, yeah, very pretty. Okay. But if you got it growing like that, and I say keep with keep, it. Keep, if you want to transplant keep, that, keep, I would do so. <laughs> yeah, it's right. low growing ground cover. Low growing, and low it's, maintenance. Somebody think about that deep shade or something, though. Right, right. <laughs> it, 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 right. Have that in there. Yeah, so that would be good. So. You're doing a good job, and no, it is not a weed to us. It's not, a juga. It juga. might be a weed to somebody else, but it's a juga. Yeah. All right, so here's our next uh, viewer email. What can I use to kill the grass that is growing in my watermelons? <laughs> How about that? Yeah. What do you think about that one, Booker? I don't know. It was, uh, in the, no, we'd like to recommend a, a, a herbicide or something to spray right. in, in, into your vegetable garden and uh, around in there. So, um, Maybe preen, you know, just to what kind of grass you have in there. You think that'd be something you might I, I, use? I think you use preen as a pre, and pre, you might yeah. be able to use trefland, trefland as a post. Trefland as a post, and something like right. that, yeah. But, but I, I'll read the label on that. Read, read the label. Uh -huh. And then, because then watermelon is so close together and all that, right. running and running and all that. So the best thing to try to treat it real good when they, when, they, when, they, when not nothing in there. Yeah, uh, pre-emerge. Yeah, pre-emerge, right. yeah, when, yeah, when they, when they think the harvest out of there, then try to treat the air real good and try to get rid of pre-emerge and, and, and doing that. Right, mm -hmm. but your yeah, exactly. Trefland, there's post. Post, yeah, Mr. Post, yeah, post. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I'll read the label on yeah, that. Yeah, post. I know you yeah. can't use it, you know, mm. in cucurbit beds. Yeah, yeah, premium be a good thing. That's a premium. Right. Yeah, post be good too. Right, mm. or you can always go with the white technique if you wanted to use a glyphosate, but I'd be careful with that. You know, just kind of, you know, take a towel or something and just mm. kind of douse it a little bit with the glass and wipe some of the grass around the watermelon. Yeah. Uh, but you just got to be careful with that. But I would go with a pre-emerge to pre start off yeah, pre yeah. And that way I wouldn't have to worry about coming back. Coming back, you know, yeah. With something else. This, yeah. Then the, the, the real bad, sometimes all we, we all reckon you, you can rotate your watermelon somewhere yeah. else, then yeah. go in there and try to get that area ready. Uh, you might, you need to rotate the vegetable anyway. Right, true. And uh, put them in another area of the garden. 
in some way. But uh, it's hard to get real because they, they, so they be growing up so many vines and all that growing yeah, around right. there. It's pretty it's, thick. Very, very thick and everything. But I like watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you want to say you watermelon, you got to do that for yeah. sure. Because at the end of the day, we all know what Bermuda grass is looking for. Yeah. It's looking for a nice, fertile bed. Fertile <laughs> bed. <laughs> so be it, careful. It, it do jump and all, in, all around. So, yeah, in, in there. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right, Sherry, Booker, we're out of time. Thanks for being today. Thank you. All right. I enjoyed Thank it. You. Thank you. Remember, we love to hear from you. Send us an email or letter. The email address is familyplot at wkno.org and the mailing address is familyplot7151 Cherry Farms Road, Cordova, Tennessee 38016. Or you can go online to familyplotgarden.com. That's all we have time for today. You can get more information about what we talked about today, including Sherry's pesto recipe on familyplotgarden.com. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Cooper. Be sure to join us next week for The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Be safe. Production funding for The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South is provided by Goodwinds Landscape and Garden Center in Germantown since 1943 and continuing to offer its plants for successful gardening with seven greenhouses and three acres of plants plus comprehensive landscape services. International Paper Foundation The WKNO Production Fund The WKNO Endowment Fund and by viewers like you. Thank you.